Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Kids Connection. My name is Audrey Zorik. I am the director of Kids Connection here at Vallejo Drive Church, a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God through different Bible stories, songs, and different activities every Sabbath. If this is your first time, I would like to invite you to come back. Every Sabbath, we have a new program with different activities, and hopefully, you'll come back and you join us again. And if you're a regular, it's always good to have you here. Happy Sabbath, and welcome to Kids Connection. Today's program, we're going to help you to connect with God through a Bible story. And before we get to the Bible story, we have a couple things, and I have a story that I'm going to share with you. So hopefully, you guys stick around, pay attention, call mom and dad, grandma, grandpa, aunts and uncles, whoever you're watching with, sit down on a couch or your bed or wherever you're watching, and let's enjoy our program together. I'm going to invite you to get ready. We're going to sing a song of the day that we don't normally sing here at Kids Connection. So for some of you, we'll be a little bit different, but it's a cool song, and you guys will enjoy this song, and it will connect with our story today. So let's sing it together. All right, so that was a fun song, wasn't it? I hope you enjoyed it and you sang along. Welcome back to this website every day of the week as you can continue to listen to this song throughout the week and sing it along with mom and dad. Now I'm going to invite you to bow your heads, close your eyes so we can talk to Jesus. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for another Sabbath. Thank you for another program on the way. We ask that you be with us as we worship your name and we learn a little bit more about you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you for praying with us and for being a part of another program. I can't wait to have you guys right here back at Kids Connection Space, a place where we have a lot of fun together. It may be a little bit different, but I'm looking forward to it. In today's mission story, we're going to hear about a couple, a couple that used to live in Argentina, and they travel all the way around the world and they went to a different country because they heard God's call to do something. 
let's watch our mission story and see what they are doing in Greece. We want to make Jesus famous here. This is our goal. We, we want the people to see this place as a place of refuge, as a place uh, where they can find a family, as a place where uh, they can find Jesus or a, a peace in the midst of, of the storm. See you. Bye bye. Elias and Melina left their home in Argentina and moved to the Mediterranean island of Cyprus. They became Adventist volunteers and now manage a global mission urban center of influence called Meeting Point. When you are in Christ, you are born as a missionary as well. So that's why we decided to, to, to take this challenge of being a missionary. We are trying to give all we have learned to serve others. I think it's important it's important to have the same method that Jesus had. First, he related to the person, saw their needs, and then preached. It's basically what we're trying to do. Use this method. Following Christ's method of ministry, Elias and Melina go door to door to find out what kind of programs their neighbors are interested in then they can tailor their work to the needs of the community. After just a few months in Cyprus, the volunteers have started a variety of programs at Meeting Point. I give nutrition advice, therapeutic massages, facial treatments, and things to help me grow a little closer to the people. These health programs give Elias and Melina the opportunity to connect with people who otherwise probably wouldn't walk into an Adventist church. Although many people on the island speak English, Greek is even more widely spoken. The greatest challenge here is the language. That's why we are looking forward to, to learn Greek as quickly as possible in order to communicate better with the people. They found creative ways to communicate with the Greek-speaking visitors, like using translation apps on their phones or learning common Greek phrases. When someone comes to Meeting Point, they are greeted by a warm atmosphere, refreshments, and books as they wait for their health assessment. After the assessment, visitors receive an evaluation with lifestyle suggestions and are encouraged to visit again to follow up on their progress. Meeting Point is also a place kids love. Elias and Melina host a fun activity each week and plan to expand the programs. It will be a program for kids where they will make crafts. We will make crafts, follow recipes, and play games. There is a fun part and a part where they learn something. Today's activity involves painting positive messages onto stones. The kids love doing crafts like this. But the real fun comes when they give their creations away to strangers on the street. People love receiving these precious gifts. The kids go home knowing that they've spread some joy in the community. We are sure that God is blessing this activity because we see the happiness in their faces. And we are sure that with, with time and patience and love and uh, trying to show Jesus to them, we will see many results, many people saved by this activity. So this is uh, something that makes us very, really happy. Each Sabbath, Elias and Melina lead the worship service for the church plant that gathers in Meeting Point. Some of the people here attend regularly, while others are just visiting. Your prayers and mission offerings have played a key role in making this happen. I want to give our gratitude to the worldwide church, because by your support, by your help, by your tithes, by your offerings, we are making the difference here. Thank you for supporting the Seventh-day Adventist Church and helping Adventist volunteers like Elias and Melina spread the love of Jesus to the world. Wow! Have you ever had to learn a new language and teach people about God in a different language? 
that's what they're doing and this is amazing let's go ahead and remember them in our prayers as they continue to share the love of god with other people and also help them with our financial support by clicking on the link above and donating to the missionaries ask mom and dad to help you do that okay now every sabbath we have a different activity that help us to connect with the lesson of the day and our lesson in our classroom today we're going to do something different we've shared a story here with uh we've done experiments we've done puppet show we've done clips and movies today i'm going to i'm going to share a story with you all right do you like stories do you yes good because today i'm going to share a nice story of a boy named peter are you afraid of the dark are you afraid of airplanes are you afraid of riding a bike are you afraid of um, falling are you afraid of heights what are you afraid of today's story is about a boy named peter he was seven years old and peter was afraid of something he was afraid of dogs are you afraid of dogs yes no do you have a dog at home do you know someone who does have a dog are you afraid of that dog are you afraid of small dogs or afraid of big dogs or you're not afraid of dogs at all i'm not afraid of dogs i love dogs i always had dogs when i was a, i was a kid and recently i shared right here in kids connection that we got a little puppy her name is rosie remember i showed you rosie yes okay so peter seven-year-old was afraid of dogs wow he had to go to school and he used to live a couple blocks away from school and he walked to school with his friends now everyone live on the same street they would get out of the house at the same time and they had to walk to school the problem is that on the way to school there was a house with this big dog outside and peter was terrified of that dog all the other boys loved the dog and they always wanted to walk on the right side of the street because the dog was there and they wanted to pet the dog but every time peter got close to the house he would find an excuse to cross the street and walk on the other side of the street so he would call his friends and say oh let's walk on that side because there's shade on that side and another day he would say oh let's walk on that side because the wind is too strong on this side of the street and he always found an excuse to tell his friends that he wanted to walk on the other side of the street because he was afraid of the dog he never told his friends that he was afraid of the dog but he never crossed the street on the right side because that dog was there it was just a few houses down and they had to cross they had to go on that street to go to school their friends one day said oh peter why do you always ask to go on the other side of the street are you afraid of dogs and peter said no no uh, i'm not afraid of dogs no no not at all why don't you walk on this side of the street and you always ask us to go on the left side of the street and peter didn't want to tell them because he was embarrassed all his friends liked dogs but he didn't he was so afraid of dogs oh no and how am i going to tell them that i don't like dogs they're going to laugh at me they're going to think that there's something wrong with me but i'm terrified i don't like dogs at all one day peter had to walk to school with dad dad said peter i'm gonna walk you to school today because i have a i have a day off from work i just want to walk with you and peter was thinking oh no is my dad gonna find out uh that i don't like dogs how am i gonna tell dad oh and he was so worried about that but dad grabbed peter's hand and he was walking to school with Peter. Dad saw the dog coming 
just a few houses down. And Peter was, he started to sweat. He, he started getting nervous. He started almost shaking. And he said, Dad, can we walk on the other side of the street? And Dad said, no, no, that's okay. We'll stay on this side of the street. Because I don't want to cross the street in front of the cars. There's too much traffic going on. So he held his hand and he kept walking. But Dad noticed something. That as soon as he was approaching the dog, Peter started squeezing Dad's hand tighter and tighter. And Peter started holding back a little bit. And Dad was walking in front and Peter was behind him. And Dad realized that Peter was afraid of the dog. Dad stopped for a second. He came back to Peter and he said, Peter, are you afraid of dogs? Peter didn't know what to say because he was, oh, I can't lie to my dad. I have to tell him the truth. He's my dad. He's not going to laugh at me. Uh, I hope. But, and quickly, Peter just looked at his dad and he said, Yes, dad, I am afraid of dogs. And dad said, Peter, I am not afraid of dogs. And I'm going to hold your hand and I'm going to hold you really tight. And I'm going to walk with you. And I guarantee you that that dog is not going to do anything to you. Because dad knew that dog. Peter got really close to dad. He was holding his hand really tight. And dad slowly walked by the dog. And the dog didn't do anything to Peter. Whoa. I didn't expect that, Peter said to dad. I always thought that the dog was going to attack me, that the dog was going to bite me. But no, the dog just sat there as we walked right by the dog. Isn't that incredible? Peter said dad. And Peter said, thanks dad. I'm so happy that you're walking with me and you're not afraid of dogs. He went to school. On the way back from school, dad went to pick him up. And as he was walking back to school, Peter said, dad, can we go on that side of the street again? I want to walk by the dog again because Peter felt secure that dad was with him. So dad said, sure, Peter, let's walk on that side of the street. And they were walking back home on that side of the street again. And as as they were approaching the dog, Peter just held his, ha his dad's hand and he was looking at the dog. He wasn't that afraid anymore. And as he was walking by the dog, dad said, Peter, do you want to stop here for a little bit? And Peter held his dad's hand and he said, sure, dad. And then they stopped right in front of the dog. As they stopped there, the dog who was taking a little nap on the sidewalk looked up to them and he wagged his tail at that moment dad said look peter the dog is wagging his tail because he likes you and peter looked at the dog the dog wagged the tail even more the dog stood up peter freaked out a little bit and dad said don't worry peter I am right here with you. And the dog came, snipped his foot, snipped his leg, snipped his hand. And dad said, look, Peter, you can pat him on the head now. So Peter reached out his hand with dad and he pat the dog on the head. The dog licked him on the, on the arm, licked his leg, and the dog was all happy and Peter loved it. He couldn't believe it that the dog didn't bite him. Wow, that was incredible. And Peter said, Dad, I'm not afraid of dogs anymore. And Dad said, I told you, Peter, there was nothing to be afraid of because I was right here with you. Well, kids, 
from that day on, Peter was not afraid of dogs anymore. And he would happily walk on that side of the street with his friends to school. And every time he would walk by, he would pat the dog on the head and walk along to school. On the way back, he would pat the dog again and go back home. He became friends with the dog. And the dog was looking forward to see Peter every morning and afternoon as he was going to school and coming back to, from school because he was friends with Peter. And he knew that Peter wasn't going to do anything to him. And Peter knew that the dog wasn't going to do anything to him either. That was the end of, of Peter's frightened days of fear of dogs. Today in our classroom, we are going to learn a story about, about the Israelites, how they too were afraid of something. They were afraid of some people. And for a long time, the Israelites were afraid, not knowing what to do. Until something happened. The same way that Peter learned how to trust his father, the Israelites also had to learn how to trust God. And we're going to hear how God helped the Israelites not to be afraid anymore. So let's sing our song of the day together again that we'll talk about fear. And then we're going to listen to our lesson in our classroom by our teacher that will also explain why we are sharing this story with you today. Okay? Wonderful. Let's stand up, sing our song of the day today again, and uh, prepare for our lesson today. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for your promise that we can always count on you. Thank you because even though we are afraid, you are always there. And we can count on you not to be afraid. I know that there are a lot of things going on that sometimes is very 
scary. But God, help us to trust in you. Help us to hold on tight to your hand and to know that you are there to protect us. Bless each child who's listening to this story today. Be with them and their family. Keep them safe and help them not to be afraid of the things on this earth. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you for joining us for another Kids Connection program. Stay tuned for our lesson today with your teacher in your classroom. And I'm so happy to let you know that this coming Sunday, tomorrow, is Father's Day. Yes, it's Father's Day. Have you prepared something special for Dad? Have you? I hope so. If not, if there's still time. Ask Mom to prepare something for Dad special for tomorrow. Okay? So let's celebrate Father's Day. Let's serve breakfast in bed for Dad or uh, write him a, a card for Father's Day or um, buy him a little gift. Ask Mom to help you or Grandma or Grandpa make a surprise. Dads, Dad loves surprises. Some dads, I do. I love surprises. And I hope you guys enjoy um, having fun with Dad tomorrow. And if you don't have Dad around with you, it's okay. Ask God and pray for Dad wherever they are, whatever he is, may God be with him. Some of our kids don't have our dads with us anymore. And uh, we pray that someone in your life is being a part of or taking that responsibility as dad and helping you uh, to have someone close by. Thank you so much for joining us on another Kids Connection program. I hope that God blesses you, be with you. Don't forget to send us an email. Invite kid to come by and see you at your house um, doing on Sabbath, and we'll be happy to bring kid over to visit you. Or let us know how you're doing. Send us or your picture, and I'm so happy that when we hear things about you guys and what you are doing, and I'll be happy to share those moments with kids um, right here on the air. Keep praying for our Kids Connection program. Thank you so much for all the love. I love you guys. Until next week, God bless you and keep you safe. Bye-bye. Happy Sabbath, guys. I'm Teacher Kelly, filling in for Teacher Kathleen this week. Today, we're going to learn about depending on God's power. We're studying the book of Judges, and last week we learned how God led Deborah to defeat the Canaanites. Now, it had been 40 years later that the Israelites started worshiping idols again. So, when God comes to Gideon, Gideon is instructed to destroy the altar for Baal, which Gideon's own father built. The Israelites continued to forget about God. So now these Midianites were coming in and bullying these poor Israelites who are God's chosen people. And I was thinking about that this week. Why were these guys always bullied, enslaved, conquered? All this trouble always fell on the Israelites until one day it just made sense because these were God's chosen people. The people that the Messiah was coming through. Of course Satan is gonna have a stronghold on them. Of course he's gonna make their lives miserable. But somehow the Israelites were always influenced by the world, which Satan exists in and tried to make it difficult for them. So they kept turning away from God. I will be reading Nehemiah 9 verse 17. They refused to listen and failed to remember the miracles you performed among them. They became stiff-necked and in their rebellion appointed a leader in order to return to their slavery. But you are a forgiving God, gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love. Therefore, you did not desert them. So behind me, I have just two grapevines. But if all of a sudden these bullies came through and started chopping off all of the vine, I would be devastated. It takes a lot of time and energy to get these grapes to grow. Here's a good bunch right here. I would just be devastated. So imagine for seven years you had to run and hide from these bullies and harvest your crops as fast as you could and take them away into caves on the hillside. 
that would be a stressful way of living. So an angel from God comes to Gideon while Gideon was in a wine press threshing wheat. Now let's explain how wheat is threshed. This is a stalk of wheat. And when it's ready for harvest, they cut these off and then they have this huge open area where they count on the wind to blow away all of the chaff. Now, these little wheat berries are inside all of these shafts and you have to be able to separate it. So I'll just pick one out to show you what it's like. So what you wanna do is, oh, that one just came out. This is a little wheat berry. It just came out of the shaft. So here is the outer covering, which we don't eat, and that is the shaft. And they rely on the wind to just blow those away and separate it from the wheat berries. These wheat berries are then ground into a flour for bread and for cakes, for cookies and everything that we buy already made for us from the mill. So it's not an easy job. And for them to have a whole bunch of wheat fields and for the Midianites to just come in and chop them all down or take them away from their hands or destroy them, light them on fire. They also killed their cattle and their sheep, their donkeys, everything. These guys were ruthless. Way too risky to be doing this out in the open when the Midianites would just come through and terrorize them, which made it much harder because he couldn't rely on the wind to just blow it away. All right, so what's our lesson about? Let's play a game of hangman to see if you can figure it out before Dylan does. Okay, Dylan is gonna play hangman with me to figure out which word is here before a little stick man gets hanged. Okay, what's your first letter, Dylan? Um, G. There is a G. Me, I am lucky. Next letter. F. I'm just guessing, I'm not, I don't have a plan. No F, so he's got a head. I thought I had a whole body. I mean, I do in real Next life, letter. but. B? No B. Ah! There's your body. B for body. Um, A. A. It needs to be a vowel. There's an A. E. There's an E. Yeah, I just judged it by uh -huh. that. What word could it be? Any guesses? K. No. I mean, that was terrible. Okay, here's a leg. I don't need a word. I need a face. Um... There's only one more letters. X? Not, no, no, no. X, there's no X. No X, I'll give you. How about another vowel? Uh, oh. I seriously didn't think that would work. There's an O. That looks so weird. Hmm. Uh, F, did I say F? You said F, no F. Oh yeah. Mm, this is How about another vowel? I was gonna say R, but R. Another you? you. Oh. Ooh. Outrage. Wait, that's an R. Oh. I know, but there's no on there. Got, oh, it's courage. Got it. I'm like, oh no. Courage. Our story is about God giving us courage. I would have never run if I, I would have never won if I didn't have courage. <laughs> God needs to give us courage to do things that are difficult and scary. All right, so what is it like to have courage for you guys today in third, fourth, and fifth grade? So how about when you feel like you have to give a speech in front of the class? You can ask God to be with you and so you can have courage to do it. Or maybe you have to go to the doctor's appointment and you're afraid of getting a shot or maybe you have to have a tooth pulled at the dentist all these things we can ask God to give us courage to get through them. We may not be defeating a huge amount of people like Gideon, but anything, no matter how small or how big, we need courage. And God always reminds us of his power through these stories in the Bible. So an angel appears to Gideon and says, you're gonna be a mighty hero. God is going to make you be the judge of Israel and you're gonna defeat the Midianites. And here Gideon is like, who am I? I'm just hiding 
trying to get some wheat. I don't have any authority to gather a huge group of men to be warriors. Can you imagine like me, Teacher Kelly, was called by God to gather troops? Like I, I have no ability to do that. I have no authority to do that, but God does. God can do anything. We have to trust in him and let him lead. We're gonna tell our story using pipe cleaner stick men. So Dylan will tell us how to make them in case you wanna make them too. I'm gonna teach you how to make pipe cleaner stick men. So first you take any color of pipe cleaner and then you fold it in half like this. And once you've done that, you can take it from like about the top and then um, pinch it and then twist it to make the head. See? And now what you want to do is you want to take the, the ends at the bottom and cross them. These are going to be their arms and then twist them as well. And then you take the arms and you flip it all the way to the head. Okay? Make them like that. And then you can, if you want to, you can make them little shoes. And you just take the feet and simply turn it like that. They have it. So God promises to be with Gideon, and Gideon gathers the troops. 32,000 men showed up. So this will symbolize 32,000 men. And God said, mm, too many. Let's send some home. Who doesn't want to be here? Raise your hand. You're scared. Go home. 22,000 left. More than half went home. So Gideon was left with 10,000 men. Okay, that's still a pretty good number. God said, mm, too many. God wanted to make sure the Israelites never claimed the victory to be their own. With so many men, it would be easy for them to forget and say, oh no, we had so many men, we did it. We did it on our own, we didn't need God. God was sick of those mistakes. They needed to give God the honor and the glory he deserved. God could have done it with one man. So God tells Gideon to lead them to the water to drink. He separated those that lapped up water like a dog and those that knelt down and cupped the water into their hands and drank. Gideon tells the men to go to the spring to take a drink of water. Okay, men, please drink. Now let's look and see what's happening. The soldier who's down and lapping up the water like a dog has hold of his sword at all times. The soldier who has let go of his sword is alert to his surroundings around him. Depending on which translation of the Bible you read, it's very difficult to understand which men God chose. It's thought to be from the Hebrew, where the original text was written, is that those that got down on their knees used two hands to use to drink from, and those that lapped it up more like a dog, which is impossible to actually have a human lap up water like a dog, probably used one cup to bring to their mouth. So. That's not the point of the story. Let's not get hung up on these little details that really don't matter to the story about God is just choosing the group that has less. And this was one way to separate them. So Gideon says, okay, God, if this is you telling me to lead these men, then I'm gonna lay this cloth on the ground. And you know how it gets all dewy, waters over the cars and the grass in the morning? Gideon is like, this fleece is going to be on the grass and it's not going to get wet but the ground all all around it will be wet and so the next day came and the ground all around was wet the fleece was dry Gideon was like uh hmm, maybe this was just coincidence please god give me another sign how about the whole ground be dry and just this fleece be wet with the dew so the next morning came and it was. The fleece was wet and the whole ground was dry. Truly, those were both miracles.
So Gideon, he realizes this is God. This is God's power. God's going to be with me. I can do this if I let him. So now Gideon had 300 men. God asks them to get three things. A ram's horn, a clay pot, and a torch. Swords were not necessary. So Gideon is left with 300 men. And the Bible tells us they were never able to count the Midianites because there were just so many of them when they would come through like a swarm of locusts, thousands at a time, destroying their crops. We know there's a lot more than 300. 300 you can count. Now with only 300 men positioned above the Midianites camp, Gideon, 100, 200, 300 men looking down and seeing all those Midianites there. Gideon was scared. He needed courage from God. God told him to go down and eavesdrop. So when Gideon did this, he hid and he overheard two soldiers talking. And one was telling the other about a dream they had, that God was going to give Gideon and the Israelites the victory over the Midianites. Gideon realized God was working out every detail. Gideon went back to the camp and he told the men to get up and fight this battle. God was going to win the victory and gave each man a ram's horn trumpet and a clay pot. with a torch in it. The pot hid the light of the torch so that the Israelites wouldn't be seen. Gideon told them to watch and do exactly as he did. So while the Midianites were sleeping, Gideon took his men and they went down and they circled the camp, just 300 of them. Gideon took 100 of them and sent the others to the other side of the camp so that they would all be stationed around the Midianites. They reached the edge of the enemy camp during the middle of the night and surrounded the camp. So Gideon, his 100 men, and the other 200 on the other side. And they all blew their trumpets and broke their clay pots at the same time when Gideon signaled. All the soldiers held their torches high in the air so the dark was completely filled with light as they surrounded the Midianite camp. The 300 soldiers shouted, the sword of the Lord and for Gideon. Can you imagine what it have been to wake up to all of that? The trumpets, the shouting, all the light surrounding when it was supposed to be dark. It freaked him out. As each Israelite warrior stood at his position around the camp, the Midianites woke up in such a confused panic. As they tried to escape, they began killing each other with their swords. Gideon and his warriors did what God told them to do. God gave them a mighty victory. the sword of the Lord and for Gideon, all without swords. Now for a time of prayer, you guys have told me your requests and your praises. Here are some of them. I like to pray to keep us all safe during coronavirus. I'd like to pray especially for the doctors and nurses and other people keeping the patient safe at the hospital. I want to thank God for giving me my grandma and my opa, and I also want to thank God for helping everyone who is sick right now. I'd like to pray for looking for our country living home. I'd like to pray for all the people who 
who are sick in this world and need and help. Hope they can all get healed and done and not have any more sicknesses. I also like to pray for my family because if they get sick, that's not going to be good and then I could accidentally lose one. I hope they don't get sick. I like to pray for everybody and help and I ask God to help us get through with this time. My prayer request to God is for COVID-19 to be over and be for people to stay healthy and strong. Let's pray together. Dear Jesus, please protect my family and friends from the coronavirus. Please help us to find a cure soon. Thank you for hearing these children's requests and praises. Thank you for all you do for us. Um, please keep us all safe today and forever. Um, please help the doctors to find a cure for the coronavirus so that it won't be threatening anyone's lives anymore. And we love you so much. Please help us to have a good summer. Thank you for my family. And please send this coronavirus out of the earth. Thank you for giving us these beautiful children to be lights on the earth for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, you go have a great Father's Day with your dads or grandparents, and please help me out with these videos. You guys make this video so much better when you participate. So if I haven't reached out to your parents, it's because I don't have their number. They can reach out to me at Sab School Families at Vallejo Drive on Facebook. Have a great week, guys.